Guyana is negotiating a voluntary partnership agreement with the European Union under its FLECT Action Plan. This agreement will provide significant benefits to stakeholders within the sector whilst promoting Guyana's robust forest management systems. Let us work together to build our economy through proper management of our forest resources. Hello, good evening, and thank you for joining us this evening for a very important program as we update you on Guyana's journey towards signing a voluntary partnership agreement with the EU under their FLECT action plan. Um, we will update you tonight on the progress that Guyana would have been making uh, thus far, and uh, you will have an opportunity in about 15 minutes to call in and to ask uh, questions and to share your concerns. Uh, but first, let me introduce you to the panel uh, who are with us tonight. We have on my direct right, Gavin Agar, Deputy Commissioner of Forest, Forest Monitoring Division. Uh, sitting next to Gavin is Laura Singh. She is with the uh, National Technical Working Group representing the Forest Products Development and Marketing Council. Uh, next to Laura is Mahindra Chan. He is the Chairman of the Forestry and Wood Sector Group, Guyana Manufacturing and Services Association. And of course, our friend Simone Beckles from the Guyana Revenue Authority. She is the Assistant Commissioner of Wharfs. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and uh, thank you once again for coming on. Good evening, Chris. Good evening, good evening. Chris. Now, we have been hearing a lot about the EU FLECT Action Plan, Forest Law Enforcement, Governance, and Trade. Um, but for the average person out there who may not yet be too clear on what this timber agreement is, what it means for Guyana, who would like to tell us briefly what it means? Gavin? <laughs> Thank you, Chris, for putting me on this one. <laughs> Forest Law Enforcement, Governance and Trade, as the name or the acronym FLEGT implies, speaks about how forest laws are enforced, speaks about governance within the forestry sector, and most importantly, trade of specific timber products. Well, you touched on some important points there, and I think Im important also for us to convey to the public is that this particular plan, this, this action plan, the, the VPA, um, it looks for us as a country to enhance the systems that are in place when it comes to exporting timber products to the EU. And uh, there's an entire range of work that has been going on behind the scenes as it relates to that. Um, a, a very important aspect would be the agency's role so that if you're now exporting timber, uh, you would have to ensure that you follow certain procedures as it relates to the NIS and the GRE and so on and so forth. Um, and timber exports it, it is very important because sometimes people don't know, but timber exports to the EU, uh, at least for last year, I am told, amounted to about 2 million US, which is about 400 million Guyana dollars. Uh, so you, t you told us a bit about what FLET is. Um, tell us about why do we need to sign this agreement? People looking at this program know that we've been exporting timber products all along. What is different about FLEC? Would this be burdensome? Would this add more stress and strain to the persons out there? Mm -hmm. Chris, I'd like to, to just touch a little bit on that area. Why is it important? And I want to be very specific as to who the stakeholders ha are here. Stakeholders are civil society, you, who are sitting out there listening. You may not be involved in the industry, but you are homeowners, potential homeowners. You can benefit from getting a better quality of timber out of this agreement. It may seem a trade agreement, but it, as a trade agreement, we're looking at exporting to countries with standards. And our stakeholders, who are these stakeholders? Our exporters, our Lombard dealers, our concessionaires, producers, our uh, furniture manufacturers, these are all stakeholders. We are basically doing this to enable these exporters, lumberyard dealers, sawmillers, to improve various aspects of what they already do. What they do, it's very robust as it is, because monitoring from various auditing and monitoring that would have been done by the GFC would reveal that would indicate okay these are the indicators to say our stakeholders these exporters and everybody produces processes and so they're doing what they ought to do 
to meet certain grades, requirements, production levels. Neil would be able to, Neil as our um, well, industry representative and forest producer, GMSA, yes, I'm forgetting. He will be able to expand on that a little more. So it's important to everyone, even the man and the woman on the street out there, the potential ho home builder, in terms of the quality of timber that they will eventually get to build their home. As a woman and a home builder, I will say from my perspective, I want to be able to go to the store and buy a piece of lumber and put it in to make a shelf, a bookshelf. I don't want to go cutting again and planing again and doing all of that. I want a natural, you know, species to be, you know, aesthetically displayed in the application. Well, so well, that well. is why it's important. <laughs> there, there, there you have it. You see that this affects not only those who are in the forest <laughs> logging, cutting trees. And, and, and uh, Mahindra, I'd like to bring you in here. I know that you also would have been playing a very key role at Barama. Um, so you can speak directly as to what such a timber agreement means for Guyana. I, I, just before you go, I'll ask the operator to put the numbers on the screen because we will be going to the phone line soon, uh, 2258025 or 2262691. You'll be seeing those numbers. So, Mahindra, tell us, why do we need this FLEC action plan? Why weren't we okay as, it, as things were? Well, Chris, um, good, good evening to everyone out there. Um, as Laura quite rightfully said, while this may sound like a trade agreement and it's only those who are involved in the trade that should really be concerned about it, it's not entirely true. Um, the figure that you mentioned of 2 million US for 2016 is actually, previous years it was double that. But due to some restrictions in the UK aspect of it, trade has been, you know, is, is significantly reduced, which we're trying to rectify. But this trade agreement essentially gives Guyana a green lane access to the European market. You still have access to the market as it is today, but there are lots of due diligence to go through, which makes it onerous. So with this trade agreement is where the parties agree, country to country, government to government, that we can facilitate an ease of trade once you have certain due diligence being done up front and is expressed by way of a license. So at the end of it all, we're trying to set up a system which will be issuing license to exporters to the European Union to say, look, my product has been uh, checked, monitored, and everything has uh, made, basically made the mark for it to be considered legal timber, and you should feel comfortable buying it. As you know, globally, timber trade has attracted a lot of sensitive feelings about what is going on in countries, yes. especially in the tropical region. So Guyana, while it has, I would say, achieved international standards already, this is a means of expressing it. It's not a case that we're introducing new policies or new rules. We're simply demonstrating by way of a system that we are indeed doing what we say we have in the, paper, the black and white in terms of regulations and policies. I see. And, and, and let's discuss quickly um, some of the, the roles of the agencies involved. Um, we know from, from news reports and so on in the past, sometimes people have concerns about timber companies adhering to the law as it relates to paying the NIS for their staff, PAYE, and other kinds of, 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 of taxes and so on. Um, Simone, you're here with us. Um, tell us exactly the role that GRA would be playing in this process. Well, uh, good evening to the viewers out there. For GRA, you know, GRA, we are an umbrella body. We consist of value added tax, income tax, and customs trade and administration. Um, from a customs perspective, uh, the exporter will not be required to do anything more. Uh, he will just be required for this program to ensure that he would have um, submitted other tax returns. Um, however, with the GRA and our policy and being sworn to secrecy, those documentation will be asked to, for, uh, to be submitted to the GFC. So the GFC will have a checklist that they will ask the exporter to submit. From time to time, they will ask us to verify the information. Um, of course, our laws uh, does not speak to uh, certain sharing of information and you not find that only with the Ghana Revenue Authority but with other agencies that this whole program surrounds and so that's how we ended up with a memorandum of understanding so the memorandum of understanding really speaks to what will be the GFC role in 
this program and what will be the Ghana Revenue Authority's role in the program. Carla, good evening. Hello, good evening. Good evening, Your Honor. Please go ahead. Yes, I'd like to know, as a consumer, you go to the lumberyard to purchase green heart, and the materials there are so dressed, you don't know whether it's real green heart or another species. So how can I, how would I be able to have assistance from the, um, from the Forestry Commission to say, well, look, these are indeed, um, what do I look for to know it's, it's green heart or it's another species of wood? Thank you for coming through. Um, I think there's a very important question, um, especially as you said just now, you know, you're a woman who might know about wood. There are men and women out there who know. <coughs> How do we go about this? A requirement for lumberyards is the stacking of timber by species and by dimensions. So ideally, it's not a part of the regulation, but this is just a guideline particularly for customers, ideally timber within lumberyard should be stacked either 2x4, 1x4, lap edge, square edge, and by species. The reality in Guyana is that we have over a thousand commercial species that we can use. Um, so you, you will need some assistance from your contractor who knows about... Who um, will be able to guide you, to guide uh, you. Uh, along the way. Yeah. Call it just hold for me one moment as Gavin wrap, wrap up his thoughts. Yeah, so some assistance from um, a contractor is needed, but the Forestry Commission is always there. There are many major projects where um, if a particular revetment is being done, someone can write to the commission or just make a call to the commission and request for forestry officers. We have forestry officers around the country, over four to five forest stations around the country, who can go and verify the species and the dimensions. For you. And, and that's a free service. And that's a free service. Carla, good evening. You're on air. Hi, good evening. Go ahead, please. Um, yes, my name is um, Sean, and I'm calling from Arugan Samuel in Lumberyard, right? Hi, Sean. I think that signing of the EU timber agreement is a great incentive for the people of Guyana for Guyana and its people. Um, but we have to look at our local industry here. We have been in the business for almost 10 years, right? And um, like in many areas, right now has been affected. Like our sales have significantly dropped since the main factor of the 40% bond, right? <laughs> yes, and we have GRA here with us. Um, she can relate. <laughs> Go ahead, Sean. People are running now to alternative methods of building examples. Customers now prefer plywood instead of instead of farm boards. Customers now prefer PVC ceilings instead of our very own lumber. Due to this due to the significant drop in our sales, we are now forced, right? To cut back on our workforce. Employment unemployment has increased. So you would like to know how they flecked action plan, the voluntary partnership agreement would, would, would impact this, would help in some way, this uh, this plight that you're in? Guess, Hello? Hello? Oh, yeah, Sean, you're there? Yes, I'm here. Yes, um, I'm, I'm trying I'm to get the, the, the gist of your question as it relates to the FLECT action plan. Well, I think that uh, the FLECT action plan is a great incentive, right? But we have to look locally as well. You know, look at our local customer and look at our people who mm. are now. Address know? these challenges um, that, 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 that is happening on the local market. Okay, thank you, Sean, for coming through. Um, Mohindra, I don't know if you want to um, touch on that. Um, I, I know this is particularly an area that you have knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel his pain. <laughs> um, I, I don't want to detract from the, the purpose of the show here tonight, but I, as, as it was raised, and I was expecting a call like this, um, I'm sure Simone is not, not surprised either. Um, however, it is an issue which we're currently addressing as a private sector stakeholder. We can't um, afford to carry that additional taxation. Um, so I don't want to get into that, but I just want to assure the caller that the Manufacturing Association and the Forest Products Association are currently reviewing the situation 
and will be making certain statements publicly and trying to get the attention of government to respond. But importantly, bringing it back to where we are tonight, for, for the reason why we're here tonight, such um, regulations has to be followed. Once they are uh, applicable, you have to follow them. So I would encourage stakeholders at this point in time, mm -hmm. they comply with the requirements because it's there legally until such time that we can review it. So under this FLEC program, things such as this, we have a platform to address it. And oh, that so there's a mechanism in place that's to, right. to address precisely these kinds of challenges. Exactly. This is where we have a team consistent of government and private sector players sitting on the National Technical Working Group. So we can address these things there, but not everything can be addressed there also. Understood. Carla, good evening. Hi, good evening. consultation that has been done on the program and uh, what the groups were consulted. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carla. What, what? what groups, what groups, what groups were, were consulted and the extent of the consultations? So we have been doing consultations for a number of years, I think five years now. And the stakeholder groups that we would have looked at would consist of our exporters, our lumberyard dealers, sawmillers, well, generally the FPA, GMSA, persons in that sector. We've also included um, a lot of work, uh, done a lot of work with indigenous communities as well. Um, them being, the indigenous peoples being the protector of the forest and also persons, especially so, who, whose livelihoods depend on forests. Um, consultations are done primarily so as to get feedback from these communities because as a technical working group who is sitting and steering this process, we cannot just sit behind a desk or at a desk and come up with decisions using the laws and the policies. We also have to include the people who would have given us feedback and those discussions and consultations would have fed many of the documents or annexes that we are putting together. And uh, uh, Chris, it's, it's, go ahead. Yeah, so go ahead if I can add to what Laura is saying. Um, what you find when, when you're developing a new initiative, you have to ensure and, and to get it across to our populace that these laws are here. Um, it's not something new we bring into you. So we just want to make sure that we communicate with you, that we get it across to you that, yes, it is here, but it's just that there's some level of enforcement that will take place. As of my experience on the NTWG and with having this consultation is that it brings to the forefront a lot of issues that cannot even be addressed at our is at our level and so there's some requirement where we have to take it to a ministerial level or a government level and so that is that is one of the the the, the benefits of the GRA representation on the NTWG so it's not only looking at um, exportation per se but then you find that persons having a problem with how do they apply for a taxpayer identification number or how do they get their employee on the tax roll it's not Mm -hmm. um, most times what you find when we went in, in, the, in the outline regions is that persons are aware that they have to pay taxes, but mm -hmm. what is the threshold? How do I pay it? Do I pay it monthly? Do I pay it yearly? Are what are my are benefits? So the, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the details and so forth. So with a process like this is one that really us going out there and say, well, look, it's in Guyana, it's written. There are laws, there are legislation. We just, right. we just try to market Guyana in a yeah, different a way. And so in order to, to it. <coughs> right, in order to market Guyana, we have to enforce. And I think it's a very um, important point that, that, that you both raised. And the question of consultations is extremely important, um, especially in, in, in the era in which we live. So it's, it's important to point out that these negotiations would have started, I think, since in 2012. Yes. Yeah. So there would have been several <coughs> years mm -hmm. of consultations where people's input would have been taken on board. I, just before you take it, I know you have, the lines are going off, but this is a, let's focus on, this is the governance component of FLECT. And all the other panelists have, has indicated that um, where we started in the consultation process in 2012, the documents we started with, has evolved over the years mm -hmm. and it's more adaptive to what organizations not just forestry commission but the nis ministry of social protection epa, EPA 
the community deeds members, registry. the deeds the registry. registry. So, so that's indicative that those ideas and, and suggestions would have been taken on board. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. Uh, Correct. Excellent. <coughs> Carla, good evening. Good evening. Go ahead, please. Carla, good evening. Good evening. I'm calling to uh, find out about interland areas. How can the GRA assist um, interland people with the NIS and accessing proper um, documentation for them? Thank you, Carla. I'll ask Simone to answer that question. Well, um, to the call in the interland areas, I first heard her mention NIS, but from an NTWG perspective, uh, we, we have been meeting with personnel from NIS and we will be taking them into the inland region so that they could have talks with them, letting them know how they could get their employees um, on board to register for NIS. From a GRS perspective and with taxation, um, that will be done also. Um, it's part of our um, agreement where we must take personnel in and um, depending on what type of assistance they need, uh, it will be done on the spot. We also have regional offices and um, it depends on how close they are. We have offices in Lindem, we have offices in, in Letem and so forth, but we will be going to those outlying areas and taking um, tax personnel with us will be able to address the issues. Just to, add yeah. to, uh, just to add to what Simone is saying, I want to emphasize the fact that even during our consultations, these were some of the gaps that we identified in terms of, um, you know, uh, hinterland affiliation or being involved in paying their taxes and getting NIS benefits and being registered and so on, among others. And we, in our one of our annexes called support measures and financing mechanisms, we are <coughs> catering for that need in order to, to fulfill the need and putting measures in place in what we call an implementation phase. After the signing of the agreement, there will be an implementation phase because naturally we can't expect we identify these gaps, their gaps, and people are not meeting it. And because they're not meeting it, they're penalized, no. We understand that people need time to put things in place and we need money. So we'll be negotiating with the European Union to get technical and financial assistance so that we can put things in place at least to start the ball rolling in areas such as the NIS, the GRA, and many other areas that are gaps, gap filled areas that we would have identified. Great. And you would have also been helping um, in terms of building capacity of Definitely. people in these specific areas. Yes. We've been taking offices with us on consultations. This last set of consultations we did in January, Feb early February. And we've had offices going there and actually registering persons at the consultations, talking with them, informing them of the benefits. Um, basically helping them to be aware on how they can pay their NIS and GRE, you know, um, fees and so on, meeting those fiscal and social requirements. Okay, great. We have time for a couple more calls, uh, so let's get to them. Carla, good evening. Go ahead, please. Uh, I want to cut uh, two logs. Uh, I don't have a concession. I just want to know the procedure that uh, you have to go through. Uh, I don't have a, a license or anything. I just want the whole classified idea how to go about getting these two logs cut, ripped into wood, into <laughs> materials for my own purpose, for my own use. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. Thank you. So he's looking for a, a, a brief synopsis it's, of the process. It depends on the, 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 short, the short answer is to come into Forestry Commission. Yes. <laughs> and ask for any one of the offices there. It, it's, the, a, it's a detailed the, process. It is a detailed yes. process. It depends on where the log is located. Is it located on, on someone else's property? Mm -hmm. Then you cannot go into someone's property and just cut a log because you feel like. Mm -hmm. Is it located on state land? Is it located in an Amarinia reservation? Is it is a minor? Are you a minor and you want to convert this lot to a lumber? So it, it's quite a dynamic process. The the easy answer to it is coming to any one of our forty six forest stations situated around the country and an officer can 
sit down and spend at least 15 minutes with you to explain the details. But it is possible depending on where the lab is located. Carla, good evening. Good evening. Go I'm ahead. inquiring. I'm a citizen who's not involved in logging. And I was wondering, as a normal man, how would I benefit from Flick? How would you benefit? Thank you for coming through. The average person out there, the average guy is looking at this program. How flat concerns them? I like to say very simply, and I bounce off. I see Neil's, Neil, you no, can pitch. <laughs> <laughs> but I like to say, as a man on the street there, you know, once, once fiscal requirements are met, taxes are paid and so on, then you have that opportunity to build the coffers of the country, to generate revenue for the country. When you export and you pay your, your royalties and your export fees and all of these things, this is money going into the, the revenue generation for the government. And where does that money go? It goes into infrastructural building, utility services, you know, things like that. So as a man on the street, this is very important to you. It helps us to build roads to, as, a, as a government, as a country. It helps us to open areas in the interior, you know. Um, it affects the yeah, entire it economy, certainly as you heard about the, the, entire, the volume of right, cash that is generated from exports. Yeah. Um, we, we, we're know, almost so. out of time, so I'll ask yeah. each of you to give a 30-second uh, wrap-up before we conclude the program, starting with you, Simone. Great. If I could um, briefly say to the caller, I like also when I travel overseas and somebody says this is a product of Guyana, I smile from ear to ear because I'm a patriotic Guyanese. So <laughs> for me, I think this is what the program will do. It will put Guyana out there, it will market Guyana. Um, I also want persons to know that they should feel free to contact any one of the members of the NTWG at any point in time. Um, stop us on the road, the supermarket. We also we have little flyers and little um, stickers for the car. Always uh, yeah, ready and willing yeah, to help. Yeah, always ready and ready to help. So if you um, <laughs> zoom in on Gavin's shirt, you'll see what a little sticker looks like um, promoting this program. So it's not something that we will just bring to you overnight, but it's a process that and we sure went through and will with, continue to, to go that. through. Yes. Mahindra. Well, quickly, I, I, my favorite word is participatory. Mm -hmm. That's the entire backdrop to the process. And, um, I would like to encourage all my stakeholders out there, both private and, and other citizens, to get involved. A lot of information is available on the GFC website. We constantly update documents that we are in, you know, under review. And uh, I like the last caller, you know, how, how does it affect her? And I'm urging you, find out more how it can affect you because it's the entire image of the country of Guyana that is at stake. Definitely, and knowledge is power. Laura, I'll give you 15 seconds since <laughs> you had the last image extensive... Image is important, <laughs> and, and as a country, we are, we are pushing for sustainable forest, um, for, for livelihoods for people, and this plays a great role, especially for, for that man who is doing forestry so that he can put food on the table. Right? It all comes down to that, to generating revenue. Great. Gavin. From a government perspective, <laughs> I'd like to close by saying there's nothing new in the legality definition or any part of the EU flag. All we've done is looked at all the different laws of Guyana, the NIS law, the social protection law, revenue law, the forest law, and bring them into one document. So persons may think that it's something new coming from an from the EU or an external body, but it's nothing new. It's Guyanese laws, we just enforce it. Great, um, there you would have heard an update from the stakeholders and, and the actual persons behind the scenes um, helping to push Guyana towards signing a voluntary partnership agreement with the EU under its FLECT action plan. Uh, my name is Christopher Chapuanya. Thank you again for joining us and do uh, keep your ears and eyes open for the next program uh, because we will be constantly updating you on the progress that uh, the, the Secretariat, Sec Secretariat is making towards signing a VPA. Thank you again. Guyana is negotiating a voluntary partnership agreement with the European Union under its FLECT Action Plan. This agreement will provide significant benefits to stakeholders within the sector whilst promoting Guyana's robust forest management systems. Let us work together to build our economy through proper management of our forest resources.